guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope for Monday the 10th of May going through until Sunday the 16th of May 2021. Thank you for joining me, it's a pleasure to be with you today as always. I'm going to give you a rundown of what the planets are doing this week and what energy they bring up and how that's going to influence all of us down here on planet Earth. These horoscopes are for all signs of the zodiac, so it doesn't matter if you're a sun sign Virgo or Libra or Taurus, it's for everybody. I look at how the planets interact and what energy they create amongst themselves. The principle of astrology is as above, so below. So the energy they kind of create up in the sky is going to be felt by us down here on Earth. Okay, so the keywords that really came up for this week are kind of interesting because on Tuesday the 11th, we have a new moon in Taurus. And Taurus is an Earth sign, which is about control and um, concrete practical matters. And the energy I get for the week overall is really light and breezy. It's really positive. You're kind of skipping along. It's really, I feel, going to be a super positive week where you're able to rise above problems quite easily and where you do feel like, wow, I'm transcending things without too much difficulty here. So light and breezy, easy does it. Starting with Monday the 10th of May, we've got the moon in Taurus, so it's kind of building up to the new moon, and it sits right on top of Uranus in Taurus. So a conjunction is when two planets sit on top of each other. The luminary, the moon, sitting on top of the outer planet Uranus in this case. So the moon is how you feel, so it gives you a sense of, oh, I'm home, I can relax. And in Taurus, it really gives you an ability to work with practical things, to manage your schedule very well, to feel like you're in charge and in control of things. And Uranus is the unexpected and the miraculous and things really changing. So that's great. And it's a wonderful start to the week because if there are things which are changing and which feel like they're outside of your control, you're not going to be thrown by that. You'll be like, okay, that's out of my control. I can deal with it anyway. No problem. No biggie. So you really have this amazing ability to just rise above things, which usually would seem very problematic. The Moon in Taurus also squares Saturn in Aquarius, and it sextiles Mars in Cancer. So Saturn in Aquarius is about the rules, the regulations, which seem very solid and important, and it gives you an ability to even control that and to work within the framework of what you've got. And Mars in Cancer, I always talk about this, Mars in Cancer, um, placement because Mars is the red planet of masculinity and drive and it rules Aries the first sign of the zodiac so it enjoys being in charge and it likes to say this is what I'm doing and this is what I'm gonna do in cancer it's forced to focus on the family and, and on the domestic sphere of life so Mars um, is able to take charge in that area, but it has to kind of tweak and adapt its energy and sometimes it can get a little bit irritated because it has to do that. So Mars in Cancer can sometimes feel a little bit frustrating and you may have moments of irritability and like, ugh, this doesn't feel particularly nice. Mercury is in Gemini, that's very happy. Mercury rules Gemini, the communication planet, in the sign of the messenger. So um, your point of view, you're able to get that across very nicely. You're able to express yourself very easily. And it sextiles Chiron and Aries. So speaking your truth and speaking your mind feels super important and it feels healing to you. So all in all, Monday the 10th of May, you have this amazing ability to adapt your circumstances to your needs, to make things fit your needs, um, and also to find what you're looking for. Conflict with the rules or with regulations. Um, and any frustrations that arise from that conflict are easily dealt with and easily controlled. So you really feel on top of things. You feel like you're on, um, you're, you're operating at maximum potential. You're also very self-disciplined on Monday and you find it easy to deal with problems and to overcome them, especially if they would usually stump you and if they would seem insurmountable. They seem like nothing on Monday. You're really in charge. So take, take risks and tackle things that usually cause you a major headache and really resolve them very quickly on Monday. It's an amazing day to problem solve because of this energy. Communication and creative expression is very productive and it also feels healing. So if you're an artist or if you want to write a song or um, to express yourself in some sort of tangible format, really work on that on Monday. You'll be able to get a lot done and it will be high quality. 
the image I'm getting is kind of the Queen of Pentacles in the tarot. You're really able to beautify the world with your creative expression. On Tuesday the 11th of May we do have this new moon in Taurus. The new moon is when the moon and the sun they conjunct each other and the moon is pitch black and it recharges its batteries. So I'm going to make a separate video on that to go into more detail but a new moon in Taurus is really about setting goals in terms of what can I change in my practical life and that's why it's interesting that this seems so breezy and uh, light this week because the moon in Taurus says really focus on the practical stuff. So that happens at 8 in the evening, that's Europe time. Again, don't get too hung up on the timings. If you're at a different time zone, it'll happen at different times during the day. The Taurus moon also sextiles the water planet Neptune, which is in the sign that it rules Pisces. So your imagination, your feelings, your intuition, your psychic ability is connected to what you're going to do in a practical sense. So let your intuition guide you. And it also trines Pluto in Capricorn. That's the planet of death and rebirth transformation, the phoenix rising from the ashes. So listening to your gut and taking action based on your feelings can have a really powerful impact and effect on your circumstances. And remember the new moon in Taurus says take charge of your life. Take control of your circumstances. So it's really, really empowering this. I like it. Mars in Cancer squares Chiron in Aries. So um, the sense of frustration may still be there and a desire to take care of the ones you love the most. Um, and it may feel healing to spend time with family and people who are close to you. And it sextiles Uranus and Taurus. So outside circumstances that are outside of your control. Whereas on Monday you were like, oh, okay, easily dealt with, whatever. On Tuesday you can still deal with them, but it may create more of an emotional reaction. So don't go into the feelings too much and deal with things as they come along. You're really able to get things done very nicely. So you're able to control your circumstances without feeling controlled. You're the boss, you're the leader, you're in charge. New ideas about money, your career and your environment come up and also um, what concrete steps you can take to alter those circumstances and your career and your money and anything that's going on for you in a tangible real life sense. Your imagination allows you to look ahead and you have this kind of light touch that allows you to look beyond the obstacles and to overcome them, to kind of just jump over the hurdles without breaking a sweat. Moving ahead despite chaos is important and will feel like an achievement. So if something feels a little bit, oh, this is unpleasant, don't try and analyze that, just keep going. On Wednesday the 12th of May, we've got the moon going into Gemini at 1.43 in the afternoon. The moon in Gem Gemini is really about communication and ex exchanging ideas and looking at new ways forward. It's really positive and light. It likes to talk, it likes to listen, it likes to share ideas. Um, the Gemini moon also conjuncts the planet of love and beauty, Venus, which is in Gemini. So it's really a time for new love, new beginnings and starting uh, to express yourself in a really positive, kind of light-hearted way. Really nice. The Mercury in Gemini also trines Saturn in Aquarius. So you are so inspired in terms of your ideas and in terms of your thinking that you may even want to teach. And you feel kind of like the authority figure in what you're doing. You feel very certain in terms of your own ideas, which is fabulous. So there's not a lot of self-doubt here. The Sun in Taurus gives you this ability to really reign over your circumstances, not to be controlled by them. It continues. And it textiles Neptune and Pisces. So your imagination really guides you and your intuition guides you in terms of what you're supposed to be doing. So Wednesday is fabulous. The energy lifts and you really want to have fun. Nothing is kind of pulling you down or making you feel like, oh, I'm powerless. Again, you're in charge. So things like dating, visiting new places, being entertained, um, sharing your ideas publicly. All of those will serve as good outlets and try and do one or two of those things, whatever you enjoy the most. You may be discovered by someone who has a lot of clout. Something you've been trying to manifest appears effortlessly. So it's really a day full of miracles and wonder. It's really good. Thursday the 13th of May We've got Jupiter going into Pisces. Jupiter is an outer planet, so they change signs much more, much less frequently than the personal planets, which move quickly. Outer planets move slowly. So Jupiter goes into Pisces until the middle of July. 
when it retrogrades back into Aquarius. It's interesting because, you know, people always talk about we're in the age of Aquarius, um, and before that was the age of Pisces. It goes backwards. So the age of Pisces is associated with Jesus and belief and faith, and the age of Aquarius is associated with the internet and activism and the exchange of ideas and the current climate that we live in. And with Jupiter kind of uh, moving between those two signs and with it going into Pisces, Jupiter, remember, is the biggest planet in our solar system and it represents good luck and growth and expansion. So listening to your feelings, your intuition, what's happening within is where the good luck comes from and having faith as such, believing that good things are going to come to you and are meant to happen for you, that's really important because that's all you need to do to really activate that good luck. It's not about being teachable and exchanging ideas and um, and uh, connecting with other people. It's really about connecting with yourself. So the biggest and most valuable thing with Jupiter going into Pisces until July is that you, if you have a good relationship with yourself and if you trust your gut, you can't really go wrong. And that's, I mean, that doesn't sound like a lot of work, so do, do it. <laughs> it's a lot easier than trying to get other people to understand you or standing up on stage and teaching, right? So if it's easy, do it. Um, so Jupiter goes into Pisces on Thursday, the 13th of May. The Sun in Taurus continues to sextile Neptune in Pisces. So your, your intuition and your practical actions are really linked, which is great. The Neptune in Pisces also gives you a capacity to listen to your gut. And with Jupiter going into Pisces, both of them are now supporting you in listening to your intuition to your feelings and that's how you really succeed and move ahead in a positive way the gemini moon conjuncts mercury in gemini so you're feeling really expressive and communicative and fun and creative it trines saturn in aquarius so that sense of certainty is still there i'm the authority figure in my life no one else and it sextiles chiron in aries so it's about if i express my ideas and opinions i'm doing something for other people but i'm also doing something nice for myself so it's really a, a good vibe again on Thursday the 13th. Good luck comes from within. Listen to your gut. It sounds very abstract to say, you know, connect with your higher self and the universe and what your intuition is telling you. Sometimes it can be as simple as I have a feeling. I have a gut feeling and I'm going to listen to that and do it. And if you do that, you can't go wrong. You're able to manifest things instantly. So dream big and demand things from the universe. Remember that you deserve all good things and ask for them. I want this and this and this. Think of, <laughs> I remember when I, I did Nichiren Buddhism for a while. And it's a, it's a, I don't know very much about it. So this is just like a tourist's take on it. Um, it's chanting and you chant for certain things. And I remember thinking, wow, this is like treating the universe like a giant cash point machine. It's like, I want a car, I want good weather, I want, it's, it didn't sit well with me. And I'm sure there's much more to it. So if you're a Nichiren Buddhist, I just, I just literally did it for a couple of hours. So please don't send me hate mail <laughs> saying I missed the point. I probably did miss the point, but the initial thing I got from it was, it's like, wow, I can ask for things. I never, that really never occurred to me before that I can say, hey, I want, I demand. So do that on Thursday, it's really gonna benefit you. You're crystal clear in your thinking and you can really make the ultimate vision board on Thursday the 13th of May or um, a list of things you wanna manifest, same thing really. So it's perfect to do that kind of work, spiritual manifestation work, and it's also perfect to manage your diary and your calendar because you're so on top of things and you're really crystal clear in your thinking. Amazing. It's a really good week, I love it. Friday the 14th of May, we've got the Gemini Moon forming a square with Neptune in Pisces. So now the Gemini Moon continues to make you feel super expressive and creative and fun-loving and ready for new adventures. With the friction um, between the Moon and the outer planet Neptune in Pisces, your gut still guides you, so if something feels right, continue with it, and if it doesn't, Trust your gut and say, hang on a minute, this is, I don't like this. Then kind of 
it's really important to listen to your gut feelings on Friday the 14th. It also quincuxes Pluto and Capricorn and that's why it's important because the things that you do and the, the um, gut feelings that you implement and work with, they can have a really big outcome. It can really change your life. So if something um, doesn't feel right and that's your internal warning system that's saying, hey, hang on a minute, don't rush off, think about this again, then please do listen to that because it can have major consequences here on Friday. So expressing yourself honestly may have unexpected consequences. So in a negative way, if you're gossiping about someone, you may be overheard and obviously that's not going to go down very well. But if you're performing something publicly, like you're singing a song or you're reading out some poetry, then uh, it may be unexpected in the sense that like a record producer may be in the audience and actually picks you up and offers you a deal. So in a really good way, unexpected outcomes to whatever it is you're putting out into the public sphere. Either way, expressing yourself can really have life-changing consequences. So remember, what you put out, you get back. So if you're putting out creative work, then that can really be honored and it can do very well. If you're going around being negative and you know slagging other people off, then you're gonna get negativity back. So just be aware of that on Friday, it's the rule of three. What you put out, you're going to get back. Saturday, the 15th of May, we've got the moon going into Cancer at 2.30 in the morning. The Cancer moon squares Chiron in Aries. The moon rules Cancer, so it's very comfortable and happy in that placement. It's about personal healing, the family, being in love, loving love. And Chiron in Aries is about heal yourself. So heal yourself by being around those you love. It sextiles Uranus and Taurus. So love can have really interesting, unexpected results. It quincuxes Saturn in Aquarius and it conjuncts Mars in Cancer. So any rules or restrictions that you feel like are cramping your style or negative feelings, again, you can transcend those by listening to what is it that I love. Mars in Cancer also quincuxes Saturn in Aquarius. So don't let the rules bother you too much and try and find a way to get what it is you want. Ultimately, on Saturday the 15th of May, things really calm down and it's a great day for personal healing, relaxation and spending time with those nearest and dearest to you. You feel supported by those around you and the work you've done this week, you really feel good about that because it is a really positive energy. So Saturday is a good day for a really well-deserved reward or taking a rest or doing something that really makes you feel good. Finally, Sunday the 16th of May, we have got the Cancer Moon forming a conjunction with Mars in Cancer. So getting what you want is much more important on Sunday. It opposes Pluto in Capricorn. Fewer outlandish, unexpected effects are likely. Trines Neptune in Pisces, so your intuition and your gut feelings are still very strong. And it sextiles the Sun in Taurus and Quincuxes Saturn in Aquarius. So you feel entitled to make up your own rules. And that's really good. The pace picks up again on Sunday and you may be planning your future and what you can do to feel better in your work, your creative endeavors or your spiritual practices. The ideas you come up with are very concrete, again, like they have been earlier in the week because we are in the time of Taurus. So it's not airy-fairy, it's really concrete. This is what you can do in the here and now. They're useful and they're positive. So make sure you make a note of your inspirations and you try and implement them in the coming week, in the week ahead. There you go. Easy breezy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> okay, so it looks like a really fun, positive time. I hope you this gives you an idea of what you'll be working with from Monday the 10th of May going through until Sunday the 16th of May. I hope you have a lovely week. If you would like a personal reading with me, please get in touch with me via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to order your reading with me. I use astrology, tarot, numerology, and my intuition in my personal readings. I combine all of them. And to draw up your birth chart, I just need your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. And once I have that info, I can draw up your natal chart. It shows me everything about you. I like to call it like a blueprint of your soul because it really tells me your life purpose, relationships, spiritual development, travel, uh, finance, strengths, weaknesses, anything you can really, anything that's unclear you can see in the natal chart. So if you have any questions about what's coming up in future or you want like a 
personality analysis to see what you can build on and what you want to minimize, then please do get in touch with me for a personal reading. Go to gregoryscott.com and you can order it there. Uh, if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share the video online. I hope you have a fabulous week ahead. In the comments, let us know how you get on. Like if you are discovered by like an agent, like you're walking down, I don't know, if you're in New York, you're walking down Fifth Avenue and someone genuine <laughs> signs you up for, um, you know, Wilhelmina models or something, then let us know. That'd be amazing. And it'd be really inspiring for everyone else to hear that. So let us know. Have a great week and I'll speak to you for the daily tower readings. The, I'll make the video now on the new moon in Pisces and for the weekly horoscope. All the best.